Hey everyone, Sarah here from Get Feedback. Welcome to another episode of Simplify and CX. If you're new to this channel, this series is all about providing you with the straightforward answers that you need in order to tackle some of the biggest CX challenges. So if this sounds relevant to you, don't forget to subscribe. All right, before we go any further, fair warning, there is a lot of math in this video. So if you'd rather eat chalk than do math, don't worry, we're not alone. We're gonna get through this together. So today we're gonna to tackle one of the biggest problems that CX professionals face, which is how to prove the ROI of your CX program. First, I'll go over the main formula for proving the ROI. Second, I'll provide you with a specific example of how to prove the ROI of your efforts. The first step is becoming familiar with the formula for calculating the ROI of your customer experience. You calculate the ROI of your CX program by taking your return and dividing it by your investment. And finally, multiplying that by 100. Now this is where it gets more complicated. The return portion requires its own formula. It's calculated by taking your benefits, meaning the sum of money your company has gained through your CX program, and subtracting it from the total amount of investment that you've spent to execute your program. So if we put it all together, let's say your return is $10 and your investment is $2, then the ROI would be 500%. Benefits can include customer satisfaction, top line revenue, customer retention, cost to serve, and cross sell and upsell, just to name a few. Investments can include employee training, new technology, and operational costs. So it's easy to identify investments. The hard part is quantifying benefits. That's because when it comes to benefits, you have to take into account both qualitative and quantitative data. However, it's doable. I'm gonna walk you through an example with one of the most popular benefits in a customer experience program, which is customer satisfaction. If you're like most companies, you're probably using the metric customer satisfaction score, also known as CSAT, to measure how satisfied your customers are across touch points in the customer journey. Showing that your satisfaction score has gone up over time due to your CX implementations just isn't enough. You need to show how even just a one point increase in your CSAT is impacting revenue. Let me walk you through a scenario. Let's say that you send out a case closed CSAT survey and receive 1000 responses. Of those responses, 600 customers scored their experience a four or five. As for the rest, 200 customers scored a three, and the remaining 200 scored a one or two. This means your customer satisfaction score is 60%. In other words, of that batch, 60% of your customers were satisfied with their experience. So now let's say that you look into the customer data and learn that the customers who rated you a one or two all thought that the wait of customer service live chat was too long. You also realize that 92% of those customers who rated you a one or two churned, and 80% of those who rated you a three also churned. This means that you have lost 344 customers. Now let's assume that the average spend per customer is $500. And if you're a B2B business, this is the equivalent to your average deal size. So this means that the total revenue lost is $172,000. You figure out a new approach that requires some spend, $3,000 to be exact, but it will definitely solve the issue. In fact, you estimate that this change will increase your CSAT score by 10%. So you implement the change, and after some time, you send out a new batch of the case closed CSAT survey, getting the same amount of responses. And voila, your 1 to 2 rating decreased to 100, your scorings of 3 remained the same but your 45 scores increased to 700. Now you have a CSAT score of 70%. So if we apply the same math we did before, you'll find that your new revenue loss is down to 126,000. This means that the total revenue saved, in other words, the benefit of implementing the CX initiative is $46,000. Now let's go back to the return formula, which is benefits minus investments. In this case, it's 46,000 minus 3,000, which results in a total of $43,000 in returns. If this was the only CX initiative in your program, you could prove that the ROI of your effort is over 1,000%. Now keep in mind that this is just one example of quantifying a benefit. 
Once you've calculated all of your benefits of your CX program, you can then calculate your total return and divide it by the total investments. This will give you the total ROI of your CX program. So I know that I just shared with you a lot of math. The good news is that we actually have a free guide that walks you through this step by step and has a lot more examples waiting for you in the description section of this video. Also, if there's any topics that you'd like us to cover, please let us know in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.